Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say with grateful hearts, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is July the 27th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, yesterday we talked about a very unbecoming trait in those who consider themselves Christians. And today I want to talk to you about one that on the surface isn't as visible, but is probably more damaging in our relationship with our God. Now, before we get to our text, I find it very interesting that human nature, especially those who know where the line is drawn, will do our very best not to cross the line, but we will get as close to it as we possibly can. For instance, in our discussion yesterday, we talked about foul language. And for many of us, we would never say, blank you but we feel quite comfortable saying, screw you. We wouldn't say, that blanks me off, but we'll say, that ticks me off. We wouldn't say, get the blank out, but we will say, get the heck out. And we certainly wouldn't say, God blank, but you'll hear many say, God darn, God dang, gosh darn, Now, while it is true that is the spirit behind the word that is most evil in the way we use our words, in other words, there's nothing really evil about the word itself. If you're angry with someone and tell them to get the heck out, it's no different if you had used the other word because the spirit of anger is the problem, not the word. Now, while that is true, it's still very unbecoming for a Christian to use this type of language. And that includes the mild as well as the harsh. But we spent enough time talking about that yesterday. In the same way, I want to talk about this topic that is found in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. Now it says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, there's a number of things mentioned there, but I want to focus on that word liar. As God-honoring Christians, most of us do the very best we can not to tell a blatant lie. But what about a half lie? In God's eyes, is that not as corrupt as a lie itself? And we've all been guilty of it. You wake up late. You rush to get ready. You jump in the car, you speed to work, and all the way to work, you're thinking of what can I say that won't be a lie, but won't be the whole truth. Now, that's just one example. There are others as well, and you could probably think of many, but I want us to put our attention on these half-truths, on these mild, corrupt words in our speech. You see, very early on in our Christian lives, We discipline ourselves not to do these things that are so evident to be against the ways of God, but even as seasoned Christians, we can find ourselves getting as close to the line without crossing over, and the danger is getting close to the line. You see, Jesus is like the center of a wheel, and the center of a wheel is a great distance from the hub of the wheel. And so our focus should not be trying to get as close to the hub as possible, but to stay centered in Jesus. Now, of course, as we read our Bibles, we see evidence of half-truths being told by what we would consider to be good men of God, even great fathers of the faith. Abraham himself, so that he wouldn't be killed, told the king that Sarah, his wife, was his sister. Well, she's his wife. Was he lying? No, she was his half-sister, but it still was not the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And that's what we should be committed to as Christians, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And yet the flesh, in order to protect itself, finds every opportunity not to offend God with the blatant lie, but not to tell the whole truth. 
And friends, there's danger in that because that comes from the very heart of Satan himself. Let's take a look at that. Genesis chapter 3, and let's pick up in verse 1. And as I read this, I want you to notice something. See if you can detect it. Now the serpent was more subtle or more deceptive than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Did you notice it? The serpent, whom is the agent of Satan, and possibly even Satan himself, never tells a lie here. Not one single blatant lie. Let's back up and look at it again. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. He creates the doubt, the question in the heart, by saying, Hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Well, of course God didn't say that. He said you can eat of any tree of the garden, just not these two. And so he's being very deceptive in the way that he's using his words. That, my friend, is a half lie. He says in verse 4, you shall not surely die. That's not a blatant lie. You will not physically die. Spiritually die, yes, but physically die? No, of course not. That's a half lie. He continues in verse 5 and says, God knows that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened and you shall be as gods knowing good and evil. Well, that's true. That's exactly what happened. And so we see that the very fall itself wasn't based upon a blatant lie. It was based upon a half truth. And that should cause us as Christians much alarm because we so often delve and involve ourselves in half truths. And when we do that, friends, we are becoming agents of Satan. And if in using or telling a half-truth, we are as guilty as if we told a blatant lie, let's read again our text and see what happens to liars. And it's not like that old joke, they all go to Washington, D.C. The Bible is much more specific. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. The fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters... And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You see, friends, the purpose of these devotions these last couple of days is that we focus so much of our attention on the obvious, and yet we may even practice regularly these things that are not so obvious to others, but God sees all. Nothing is hidden from his sight. And when we look at the ministry of Jesus, that's exactly what Jesus was saying. He was saying, look, you Pharisees got the outside of the dish all cleaned up, but the inside is like a coffin. You're full of dead men's bones. And for many of us, friends, that's the same truth. On the outside, we look all cleaned up. But if we involve ourselves in these milder words, yet with the same implications, these half-truths, where we're not being absolutely honest before God and man, a record is being kept and we are causing great harm and conflict and damage to our relationship with our God and King, both in this life and the life to come. And so I would encourage us to spend more time looking into the hidden secret things, or so we think they are, as much as we do at least the more obvious things that we know God frowns upon. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so glad you spent a few moments with us. I pray that your heart has been challenged. I pray that your eyes have been opened. I pray that your spirit has been blessed. And I pray that in all you do, even the hidden things that no one else sees, you do all to the glory of God. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.